Hello and welcome back to The Note. Let's take a look at the foreign exchange market today. Obviously, great excitement of late, but we've also received the latest numbers on the accumulation of long-term foreign exchange reserves. Ultimately, almost nothing is as important in the long term for, for foreign currencies than those great shifts in global reserves. With me now to discuss the implication of the latest numbers from the IMF is the head of foreign exchange strategy at BNY Mellon, Simon Derrick. Simon, thanks. Hello, John. Thanks very much for joining me once more. OK, let's start by taking a look at the very big picture. This is the, uh, how foreign exchange reserves have grown since uh, the immediate aftermath of the Asian financial crisis yep. in 99. Obvious trend that they've grown <laughs> immensely. Equally obvious, something has happened recently. What, what's going on here? Okay, so the, to the big story, absolutely right to highlight this post-Asian crisis theme, this great desire of nations to accumulate foreign exchange reserves. And if you looked not just at the global FX reserves, but you looked at the emerging market section of that, we went from around about $800 billion mm. at the start of 2002 to $8 trillion by the summer of last year. The fascinating bit about this chart is it tells us that that period of growth is drawing to a close. Right. Now, there are evaluation effects in there, so let's just assume that actually the real number is probably about flat if we look at the absolute numbers in, in individual currencies. But nevertheless, that's a huge shift compared right. to what we've seen anything other than during the financial crisis to anything we've seen over the course of the last 15 years. Now, why? Is this a deliberate move or is this a forced move upon the big central bank banks and reserve managers? So the, there's three factors here. One of the big drivers during that whole period from 2002 to 2012-13 was, of course, ultra-easy monetary policy in the United States, mm. driving money overseas, looking for high yields, and the emerging markets were one of the natural places that went to. The central banks intervened, reserves grew. Of course, we're in a period where the Fed is pulling back. You know, we've tapered asset purchases. We have, we're talking about interest rate hikes at some point. We've also got central banks out there in the emerging market world that have been intervening over the course of the last six to 12 months, Russia most obviously, right. to protect the currencies. The third thing is this. And intervening means you, you Absolutely. Get rid of your yeah, yeah, totally. You're yeah. selling your reserves and buying your local currency to protect it. Mm. The third thing, and it's an important part of this, is at the end of 2013, China said quite specifically, we think that we have enough reserves now and we're going to try and pull away from this market. So the biggest player in this game has also retreated away. So those three factors together, I think that's why we're in a situation where reserve growth has, has simply leveled out. OK, so this is fascinating. Now let's take a look at perhaps the single most obvious area where it has had an effect. As developing Asia's foreign exchange reserves growth declines, so it appears the euro mm. declines. There's a much closer relationship between these two lines than there is over the last few years between any line to do with stress on the Eurozone crisis, yep. Greek yields or anything like that, uh, and, and the Euro. What, why this relationship? Uh, and this is one of my favourite charts in foreign exchange mm. because one of the great stories of the last 15 years is when you accumulate foreign exchange reserves, you don't keep all your eggs in one basket. You diversify. The latest numbers suggest that managers keep somewhere a little over 20% in the Euro. So when reserves are growing at a fairly hefty pace, there is a natural demand from reserve managers to buy the euro. Equally, if there's no reserve growth, then there's absolutely no need whatsoever for managers to step in and buy euros or Canadian dollars or Australian dollars or sterling. And therefore, when they pull away from the market, you suddenly get these far bigger moves to the downside in the euro. And if you think about what we've seen since summer of last year, it's exactly that, from a low volatility to a high volatility environment. OK, so the read-through for the euro, which is obviously concerns a lot of people at the moment, is we think that reserves are going to continue decumulating or declining, or at least not growing. And that means, regardless of what happens in Greece, in the eurozone, over the next days and weeks, the likelihood is that the pressure on the euro will continue to be downwards relative the dollar. I think that's absolutely right. We've got the interest rate differential story. The natural buyers of the euro have disappeared. So even in the most benign circumstances, it seems to me we've got very steady lower pressure on the euro. 
such a difference to where we were three years ago in the, in the, the height of the Eurozone crisis then. It really highlights the point that this is why this is, this is so important as a driver of long-term moves. Okay, thank you, Simon, thank very you. much indeed. I think it's very useful. It's very difficult at the moment to look much past this coming weekend, but you can do so, and whatever happens this weekend, the chances are that the euro will weaken from here.